In this video, I'm going to show five st five steps. Whatever, it's the same way either way. I turn my hand. Five steps to troubleshooting a blue screen of death. Now, I've never had these steps actually written down. It's just the natural flow. So so much so, I had to write down <laughs> the way I'm going to present these five steps. First, interview the user. Examine pictures of the blue screens of death. Examine reliability history. And then diagnose the issue and, and then fix it. Based upon the first three steps, the interview, the pictures, and reliability history, that's going to determine where you're going to go next. And then it's a much larger environment that requires some, I guess, experience and research and, and further effort. But the first three is pretty easy to do. So interviewing the user of the computer. In this case, Tim is his name. And he reported that he's been having this problem a long time on this computer, and he has reinstalled Windows multiple times. He has, re he has installed Windows 11, Windows 10, and Windows 8.1 in trying to resolve the issue. So we know right off the bat, this is not an operating system problem. This is not a software problem. It's something to do with, with hardware or maybe device drivers, maybe some kind of conflicting hardware components, things along those lines. It's not operating system or software. The interview was conducted on one of my Saturday live stream sessions. Tim was in the Zoom session along with a few other people that participate with us regularly on Saturdays. We also had the chat room very actively involved in trying to determine what would be the cause of this trouble. Now, I'm going to show you some images of that actual Saturday session. And I'll put a link in the description of this video if you want to watch the entire Saturday show. I think it was probably around two hours long. And there's more that we do in any show than just being focused on the problem. So here at the beginning, he, he had two photos to show me. I'm only showing you one because the second photo was taken within the same minute. And it was just further along on this completion percentage. This link here that's provided with um, this word stop code at the end of it, that's very generic for how to troubleshoot stop codes. I rarely find that useful at all. But the actual stop code down here, kernel underscore, underscore security underscore check underscore failure, that is sometimes useful and helpful if it is consistent, if all of the instances of the blue screen occurrences have that same stop code. In this case, it was not the same, although I didn't know that from the pictures he gave me because he only gave me two pictures of the same instance. Then as we go forward in the, in the video from Saturday, July 22nd. So here's Re Reliability Monitor. And I always want to look at this. These red X's on the top line they are all indicating critical errors. And in this case, they were probably all resulting in blue screens of death, but we don't know that without having the photos that occurred at that time. But those are errors that need to be resolved. Uh, any healthy computer should not be having any of these white X's on a red dot. So as we look at each one of these, you'll see up on the top line, it has a different name in the source column. Every one of these was a different source. Now that source simply means it's an indication of what the computer was doing at the time that the blue screen of death was encountered. If we have the same thing showing up over and over, then we want to go troubleshoot that specific piece of software or looking for a driver that might be involved. But since these were all different, that implies that the problem is hardware that is randomly failing, and whenever it fails, that throws a critical event and a blue screen of death. Here's the information about the computer itself. It's an IDEA Pad S340 15 API Touch. It's an AMD Ryzen 7 3700U with Radeon Vega Mobile Graphics, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit operating system, Windows 10 Home 22H2. 
None of that really helps us towards resolving the blue screen of death, but just providing a little bit of information for you. So up to this point, we're expecting there's probably hardware. So the things that we're, that we're most interested in testing is storage and memory and CPU, considering whether there's problems in any of those areas. We happen to turn first to storage. Conducting a memory test, such as with MemTest86, that involves making a USB bootable thumb drive and rebooting the computer, we wouldn't be able to perform that remotely. We could talk him through it. So we went first to Crystal Disk Info because that's the quick, easy thing to check first. And we see here there's a C drive and a D drive. As we start getting familiarized with that, we find that both the C drive and the D drive reports good and a, and a good temperature. However, when we go look at the detail of the different smart attributes, we find some problems. So it's not enough to look at the health status and the temperature. You've got to go look at the raw values for each of these different attributes of the drive. Now, this is all part of the smart reporting system. These are the drive reporting this information to Crystal Disk Info. Crystal Disk Info is not actually doing any testing of the drive. So I'm going to let this play through here as I was actually reading through these on the live show. Now I've edited out the items that were not of interest and I'm only playing for you the ones that were of interest that told us we've got a bad drive here. So read error rate. We've got a we've got a high number there of read errors. And this is your boot drive. Seek error rate. That's a very, very high number on seek error rate. I believe that should be zero. Could somebody check up on that and be sure that number is supposed to be reading zero? G-Sense error rate. So there are some G-Sense errors, whatever that means. Now, since that video, I went and looked up G-Sense, and that has to do with uh, G-Forces. It's a vibration sensor, so it's a report of errors that occurred because of vibration. And that should be a low number. So by this point, we've concluded that the spinning hard drive is probably the source of the trouble. Now, this computer has an SSD and a spinning hard drive. The operating system is incorrectly installed on the spinning hard drive. When I pointed that out to the user of the computer, he was surprised and did not know that. We talked with him about the potential of him opening up the computer and removing the spinning hard drive because he really didn't need two drives in that computer and then install the operating system just on the C drive. He's not concerned about transferring data or programs from the current C drive because he did recently reinstall the operating system on this computer. So it's okay to just remove the spinning drive and do a fresh install on the SSD. He did not feel comfortable with opening the computer up and at that point in time, he informed us that he bought an extended service policy on this computer. When he purchased it, there was a warranty period, and then he bought an extended warranty, and then I think a second time he purchased an extended warranty. So once we found out there is warranty coverage on it, we said, well, let's just let them repair it. There was the potential for them to, in fact, he bought the top tier of the coverage plan, which meant they would come out to his home and do the replacement. However, he lives with his parents and they did not want a service person coming over to the house. So we went for the option of sending the computer into a service facility to have the drive replaced. On Saturdays, we have a, I have a two hour live show where people come in in the Zoom session with various level of backgrounds of, of technical skills or not technical skills. Anyone's welcome to come in there after we get to know you a little bit. And then also people are participating in the chat room to try to resolve problems. And we need to find more problems. We need more problems to come our way to resolve. This is uh, somehow the group that meets here on Saturdays. We enjoy doing that. So if we can be of use to you or anyone you know, send them our way. That's about it. I hope that was useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Oh, here's my email address. Duh. You can send an email to me with any Windows computer uh, question that you might have, and I typically respond to those during live streams Monday through Friday. Those live streams are about a half an hour long, and we typically don't connect remotely to people's computers then. That's kind of 
reserved for the Saturday show. All right. Now, you can have a great day, and I'll catch you later. Goodbye.